Mike. Oh, I'm sorry. You'll get Paul. You better take me for a second. Paul might wear you out. Hello, Bob. Joe, what's up? You played on Bobby Head's birthday, and when I said I was going to go see the Cowsels, he started singing Indian Lake in the club. Really? The fellow was saying Sonny. That's, I know Sonny. Yeah, today's his birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Bobby. Awesome. It was great being here in Boston. So great at the hat shell. So great at this evening with the weather. And the, this is beautiful. And the harmony is perfect. Oh, thanks a lot. How do you keep it up? Well, we started when we were seven, eight, nine, ten year olds. So we've been singing all our life. And I think with siblings and uh, sisters and brothers, harmonies come a little quicker than, you know, people that aren't related. So we have that DNA blend and so we're happy to have On the show we do something, the demo that got the deal. Was there a demo that got you signed to MGM Records? Uh, well actually the demo that got us signed to MGM Records was the Rain Department and other things because Mercury Records had dropped us from their label in 1965. We had put a couple of records out, you know, so down we went. While we were off Mercury Records, they also fired our producer, Artie Kornfeld. He came with us. He had written the Rain the Park and everything, so we went into the studio with no record label and made that record. And that ended up being the first release. And then they took the whole package. They took, put our mom in the band, put Susan in the band, and took it to MGM. And they bought it, lock, stock, and barrel. So as we put they didn't read it. No, it was, as you hear, that was the demo. The demo made it on Rain the Park. We were all right at that. Yeah. We have that same story, Doris Troy. Really? She did the demo of Just One Book. Yes. Because, and you know what, we kept trying to redo it, because you know, you think this is just a demo, this is just a demo, but it, and then you keep going and you realize you're not going to get better than what you did back then, you have to admit it and just take it, even though it was a demo. Well, that's a masterpiece of production. It's a good job, I agree. And I was only 17, so I can't take a lot of credit, but as an adult, listening back, I agree with you, Joe. Good record. And you with Artie Kornfeld in the studio at 17. It was cool. He was a wonder kid. Yeah, he was a wonder kid at the time. and. And he knew what he was doing, you know. We we were just like, how old was Artie back then? Artie, he was just in his twenties. Really? We thought he was like an eighty-year-old guy, you know, because when you're a kid, everybody's an adult, and a twenty-seven-year-old looks like a, yeah, he could be his dad. You know? Artie was just uh, kind of a born kid. He was that twenty-four vice president of A&R Capital Records, and this guy knew what he was seeing with us. And we appreciate that. Can we go back a little more to Mercury? What was the demo that got the deal for Mercury Records? Uh, Mercury Records was a song called uh, Most of All, which we played to them. And it wasn't our demo that got us the deal. It was our recording of a demo they gave to us that somebody else recorded because we didn't write that. Got, yeah. So they gave us the song and we, you know, put it, built it through ourselves, you know. And actually, most of all, almost was a hit. It, it made it to 212. <laughs> well, hey, you know, out of a thousand releases, maybe, right? Okay. It made it to 212. But it wasn't enough to keep us on the you know. And so, you know, we're, we're doing a documentary finding out. The guy at Mercury Records who signed us, was, his name is Shelby Singleton, and he's a really big, big giant in the industry in Nashville. Shelby promoted Sonny. Oh, okay, there you go. Shelby's, I'm sure, in a lot of people's stories. So I can't, I'm going to talk to Shelby sometime and say, Shelby, tell us why you got us from Mercury Records. Was it because we were in grade school still? <laughs> I'd love to hear his answer. But Shelby Singleton. Yes, he was the man. He was the man. He was very, all, well, everyone was way young, you know him. So it, it wasn't, he became a kind of big deal later on because we followed his career after we left. But we appreciate what he did because without Shelby and Mercury, they wouldn't have been the next step. And we appreciate that. Very cool. So, the documentary is PBS? Uh, don't know yet. We're, it's taken a long time to work on it. It's a big story with a lot of people and a lot of things in it. Uh, so, we're really just you know, getting the archive of the footage, you know, and interviews and all kinds of things that you do with the documentary. So, you know, it'll be on the, you know, the Sunday channel and things like that. It's interesting you do the podcast and that thing. Wow. Because we, you know, honestly, they don't. I mean, I heard David Cassidy does, but I hear he reinvented that song. So we just do the record. You do it great. Yeah, we love it. It's a party song. It's, and we never did it before. You know, and just on this tour, uh, this year is the only one. Yeah, so this is the time we let's do the Parker's Family song. Why not? They're not going to do it. That is so cool. And keep it alive. You know? And the, but we like the recording version, so we just copy that.
And I know you're busy. I appreciate your time. Is the tour, is there more tour today, this year? Well, tomorrow we go to Fenway to do the national anthem at the Yankee Red Sox game. Yeah, very cool. Well, that's, that's an emotional thing. That's, that's a great thing. And, um, oh yeah, oh no, that's special. And then we go to New York, we play at BB Kings at, on Times Square on Monday night. And then we go home. And then it's a nice game. Oh, that'll be fun. BB Kings. Oh. And we can do a longer show. This show is 50 minutes. We get to do an hour and a half. So. Uh, no, I'm in California. Paul's in Oregon. Susan's in New Orleans. We're spread out. Yeah. Susan's been in New Orleans a long time. He was a friend of mine. Yeah. So you knew him before he went back to New Orleans. I knew him before he married my friend Debbie. Oh, okay, all right. You knew him a long time ago. Because I worked up at WCCY with Debbie. Okay, got it. Yeah, Barry, you know, he should have left New Orleans when it was time to leave, and he didn't pay the price. Good you know. guy. Oh, Sorry. gentle soul. Yeah, yeah. Gentle soul. And very musical family, and a great and a great show here. Oh, thanks a lot. We had a blast out there. You should have seen the view. The people in the trees and the buildings. It was really something. And what a great parent, Felix. And oh, this was great. Great. He's doing a good job up there. He is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate the time and the interest. Appreciate it. Bye. Good luck to everybody. See you out there. And thanks to Mary Scott from the Lost 45s, Oldies 103. He's got one of those cool Oldies 103 t-shirts, and maybe Jay can grab a shot of Barry. Thanks a lot. You see Barry Scott on Visual Radio. I'm Barry Scott on Visual Radio. That's very pro you put down the spot there and you handled it well. Oh, what do I say? You're the council. What have you like to do? What's the stage of visual radio? I'm Bob. I'm Bob. You got all of it? I'm Bobby Scott. Oh, sorry. Joe. Joe Cortez. Yeah, I'll play. Nice to meet you. I'm Joe Cortez. I'm Joe Cortez. I'm Joe Cortez. I'm Joe Cortez. All these one of three. All these one. All these one of three point three at mixed on eighty five. CBS Radio. Thank you. Visual Radio. That's a oxymoron.